Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Well, check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something that will inspire you. Just go to deal to heal teas.myshopify.com. That's deal to heal teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That's deal to heal teas at deal to heal teas.myshopify.com. Hey guys. This is Ernest James, host of the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. And I got a question to ask you. Could you buy me a cheeseburger? Better yet, could you buy me a value meal? Yes? Well, guess what? I don't need a value meal. However, for the cost of a value meal, you can support this podcast to keep us on the air. Just go to Patreon slash Deal to Heal podcast and choose any one of the three tiers that's available. And if you just want to make a one-time donation, go to Cash App. And make a donation to dollar sign E James, the number 418. Make a one time donation to the Cash App, or again, go to Patreon to support this podcast and keep us on the air. Thanks in advance. Be blessed. Welcome to Heal to Heal with E. James Podcast. On this podcast, my guest and I will discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can live a life that is happy, healthy, and whole. So I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James, and I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, to heal, and to fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. Thank you guys once again for tuning in uh, to the podcast. If you haven't already, make sure that you listen, like, subscribe, and share to our uh, podcast on all of our social media outlets, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We are all of them. Just look up Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. Make sure you say with E. James Podcast because there's a lot of Deal to Heal podcasts out there. Um, but definitely, you guys, uh, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast and don't keep it to your uh, keep it to yourself. Spread the word to your friends, family, and loved ones that we are on the air and we are bringing hope and healing uh, to our listeners. Uh, so thank you guys uh, in advance for that. Also. I'm going to tell you how you can win $100 from the podcast, and it won't cost you anything, but you got to stay to the end of, <laughs> of the podcast to get that information. So our next segment is our product of the week. So our product of the week, as you guys know, uh, we are a self-sustained podcast, and the way that we uh, keep ourselves on the air is by bringing you products that um, you can buy to help support us, as well as um, Patreon and Cash App in order to make a donation, but we bring you products. So our product for this week is our Deal, Heal, Fulfill Cursive Tea. That's it. So this is what it looks like. So it's our Deal, Heal, Fulfill Cursive uh, Tea, and that can be found at uh, Deal to heal teas dot my shopify dot com, which is on Shopify. So definitely, guys, I would love for you guys to go there and check it out. There's that uh, tea as well as other teas. Um, we have maybe about ten different um, products that's on there. So you guys go check them out. Um, put some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That's our slogan, and we mean it. So you guys go check it out and get you a uh, deal to heal inspirational tea. So today, just like any other day, we are blessed with the guest. Oh, I'm about to choke. <laughs> we are blessed with the guest. <laughs> Miss Karen, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi, Ernest. How are you? 
<laughs> I am okay. I'm about to choke on myself. <laughs> First of all, let me say thank you uh, for being on. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us because you could have been doing anything else, but you took out your time to be here with me and my listeners, and I definitely appreciate it. So I want you to know that up front. So thank you for being here. And so, thank you so much for inviting me. No problem. No problem. So let's jump right in. Uh, the first thing I want you to do, if you can, uh, introduce yourself to my listeners and let us know who you are and what it is that you do. Or let them know, because I already know, but let them know. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that. So um, Karen McMahon, and I'm the founder of Journey Beyond Divorce. And Journey Beyond Divorce is a coaching company that supports men and women all across the world uh, in the before, during, and after stages of divorce. And our desire is number one, as we'll begin discussing, divorce is very overwhelming and upending. And so our work is to help men and women remain calm, clear, and confident through the process so that they can ne negotiate a fair and effective settlement and that they can embrace the next chapter of their life. And we do that with one-on-one -on -one coaching. We've got online programs and group coaching, and uh, we have a podcast and resources that we um, provide. All right. All right. We're definitely going to get into uh, get into all of that. Um, so I, I came across your, uh, your platform and, and I wanted to have you on because number one, unfortunately for me, I have been uh, divorced before, uh, twice to be exact. <clears throat> and but if neither of them was high conflict uh great greatly because you know I didn't want to do that that was was my personality anyway but I still know that it, it exists you know and it is something that you know a lot of us sometimes find it hard in order to move on or to carry on after the fact definitely after divorce um and then you know like you said with high conflict where there's so much other stuff on the line, beside the relationship itself, you know, it can get kind of uh, interesting to say the least. <laughs> yes. It can get heated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, yeah. you know, when, when we're talking about, you know, the, let's just talk about relationships in, in general. And even though divorce sometimes, or it is, should I say, it is an end to a, a season, you know what I mean? And it is an end to a relationship. Um, I don't necessarily like to say an end because sometimes there's other things involved. If you have children, it's not necessarily an end, but it's a different, you know, it just, it's, it's a, yeah, we, we, we call it like a restructuring because yeah. the truth is, you know, there's always going to be mom and dad and the kids. So it looks different, but it's not, it's not like the family goes away. It just changes shape and size. Yeah, yeah. So when we're when we're talking, or should I say, when you're talking to to just couples or just in general, um, to to people about you know some of the things we can do, either in the midst of or prior to you know even the divorce, but definitely as we're going through that uh, that season, just to be able to have healthier uh, relationships. You know what I mean? To be able to co exist at the same time you know right. what are some of the things that you guys you know teach or ad advise some of the people that come to you yeah you know that's such a great question and i think it probably is similar for so many of the other challenges that you talk about on your show uh i'm going to start with this statement every upset is a setup every time we're triggered we have an opportunity an invitation to go in and learn more about ourselves. And what most of us are raised to do and do is we go out. If I'm having an issue with you, you're the problem, Ernest. I'm not the problem. And so we lose the gift of, um, of growing and healing ourselves. And so what we do with our clients, they've been in marriages that are years or decades long and that may have been um, souring for quite some time. And so they're crystal clear. We're all very crystal clear on what our spouse's problem is and the mm. role that they play in the dissolution of the marriage. But looking in the mirror and saying, what did I bring to the table? What are the shortcomings? What are the insecurities? What are the wounds that I brought to the table? How did I add 
to the breakdown of what was that started out to be such a loving relationship. And when we do that and we heal and we um, refine our character, we emerge a better version of ourselves. And you just said that you've been through two divorces. One of my desires, um, first marriages have about a 50% divorce rate. Second marriages go up another 10% to close to 60. Third marriages go up another 10% to 70. And you would think three times a charm. Most people should get it right by the third time. The reason they don't is because they think they've divorced the problem. And so mm. our hope is that when people realize I can only control myself, so let me work on myself, then a lot of possibility opens and it gives us all an opportunity to find healthier partners and, and just to live a better life. Yeah, and I, I think that's really important because that was one of the things that I had to come to grips with myself. Um, like I said, coming out of two divorces, uh, both marriages lasted about 10 years, which I think is a, a good time. And it was like, hey, if you make it 10 years, you're, you're all good. <laughs> Pretty <But> good. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> that, that wasn't necessarily um, the case. Uh, but coming out of that, one of the things that I did was to begin to look at myself like, okay, what did I do wrong? You know, um, it's definitely easier to to point the finger at the other person. And yep. when I knew, okay, knowing the person that I was before I getting married, and the person who I wanted to be and wanted to show up as, you know, obviously, I missed the mark somewhere. You know what I mean? Even just within my myself, uh, not blaming anyone else. Like it, it had to be something that I added because again, the marriage is made up of two people. So what part did I play in the success of it? But also what, what part did I play in the, in the downfall of it? You know, and begin to, to uh, notice those things and point those things out to be able to work on it myself. So that's, I, I like that because, yeah, that was one of the things I had to do, you know. And if, if I do have a third time going around, I will hope I do get it right. <laughs> because I did uh, try to take out the time and, and learn from my mistakes. That, that I did in, in the first two uh, marriages. But I think that there is a, a part that, you know, we both play uh, the man, husband and the wife, you know, to be able to, uh, again, going back to that, to, to coexist, you know what I'm saying? Um, in, the, in the midst of the marriage, I, I believe, and, you know, like I said, definitely after the marriage. So, you know, we have to be able to, to coexist because we talk about, you know, co-parenting, you know what I'm saying? And we talk about, you know, other things like that. And definitely if we have businesses, you know, if we have you yep. know children and things like that, we have to yep. be able to exist in the same space. You know what I mean? So uh, definitely I know that in, in high conflict, there are some of those things that's, that's at, at stake, you know, to be able to, you know, that they have to be able to work together, if nothing right. else. So what is what is something even in, in that space of like, you know what, we have to be able to coexist. You know, how can we do this even though we're no longer a union as far as the yeah. marriage wise? Well, you know, that's a great question. And the truth is when it comes to high conflict divorce, and I'd like to just define high conflict because mm -hmm. I think that it helps. When it comes to high conflict divorce, um, often you're not co you're not collaborating, you're not co-parenting, you're doing everything parallel because there's no ability to communicate, collaborate, co-parent. But I'll get to that in a minute because I'd like to, you know, we could call it high conflict, we can call it toxic. So there are certain um, elements that if your mm. listeners are saying, well, am, am I in a high conflict situation? This is what it looks like. So I'm going to talk about the high conflict personality. I'm not talking about a disorder, but I will say many high conflict personalities fall under um, individuals with character or personality disorders, mm -hmm. individuals who are struggling with addiction, alcoholism. When, when you're in that space, um, uh, what you'll experience if you're in relationship with someone like that uh, could be very black and white thinking. You're wonderful or you stink. 
um, <laughs> I'm absolutely right or you're absolutely wrong. So it's like everything's an absolute and there's no gray. And of course we live in the gray. So when you're in relationship with someone where it's very black and right, white, there's really no room to collaborate and, and to wiggle room. Another one is blame and accusation. A high conflict individual can't really um, take responsibility. So it's always you. And, and if it was me, well, that's because you made me do it mm -hmm. and, and you and you and you. Right. And then another one is um, revisionist history, where how is it possible that I always remember things so differently than you? And so um, this happened in my marriage. I mean, long before I got married, uh, we, we had gone into an attorney's office and my then fiance was doing all of the talking and the little bit the attorney said was this is not a good case and we got in the car and he's like the attorney thought it was a great case and we're gonna win and I was like <laughs> and and he heard his words and then believed that that's was the whole conversation mm -hmm. so if that resonates with your listeners so there and that's just a few of the many things um that when when one personality is like that, the other personality typically is um, people pleasing and trying to compensate and trying to control. So so there's like a lot of issues on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. Um, but when you're involved with a personality like that, it's it's a little crazy making. You start doubting yourself. You start losing your self confidence. When those individuals, after doing that dysfunctional dance for years or decades, come to divorce, um, our desire is to help the individual we're working with, which is usually not the high, higher conflict individual, to learn how to emotionally regulate, to begin to understand uh, their wounds and their um, maybe coping mechanisms from childhood that no longer serve building healthy relationships. We teach them about boundaries. We teach them mm -hmm. about what people pleasing and codependence is. And, and then we help them find their path that makes that aligns with who they are. Okay. Okay. So I, I want to touch on uh, one thing. Uh, I definitely want to talk about boundaries real quick. Um, but I want to talk, I just want to throw this story in when you, talk, when you said about the example that you gave about, you know, hearing two different things, right? One of the things I always talk about with people have uh, selective hearing, right? And it's like, they hear what they want to hear and they remember what they think they heard, you know? And so yep. way back, way, way long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> before I got married, the before, before I got married in my first marriage, you know, this was like way before we got married and we we're just sitting around, you know, talking me and her and uh, the conversation about cheating came up or whatever. Now we live... Uh, in the Chicagoland area, right? So we like right off the border of uh, Illinois and Indiana, you know? Okay. And so uh, I originally lived in Illinois, then I moved to Indiana. And so my wife at the time was from Indiana. And so we were talking about, you know, started talking about cheating and whatever, you know, just having a casual conversation. And I said, well, if I was going to cheat, I would just go to Illinois because you don't know nobody in Illinois, you know, you don't know <laughs> Indiana, right? So we laughed it off or whatever and, and went on with it. I promise you, I promise you, did now this was before we ever got married, right? This conversation that we had. Fast forward into the marriage when it gets, you know, kind of toward its end got to the point where we were arguing all the time. And it was like, you know what? I don't want to come home and argue every day. So instead of start coming straight home, I would go to my cousin's house and, you know, after work and stay there for an hour or so before I came home. So one day we we're talking and whatever, and he did a thing. And I'm like, what's going on? What, you know, what's the problem? Oh, you're cheating on me. I'm like, what? Why would you say that? Well, because you're not coming home at night. I said, well, I come home. I just, you know, don't come straight home because I don't want to argue. No, I remember you told me if you was going to cheat, you was going to say I don't know. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like 10 years later, but she remembered that. <laughs> The, the piece that fit perfectly into her puzzle is what she remembered. That's great. That's a great story. I said, you got to be kidding me. I, and I promise, like I said, we had been married for 10 years. And that conversation probably was two to three years before we got married. It's like you held that in your mind for over 
12, 13 years. Yeah. And now it's coming, you know, it just it was just crazy. Anyway, <laughs> so that was that was my story with the whole selective hearing thing. Um, yep. but one of the things that that uh you mentioned was talking about boundaries, and I know that that's uh definitely a big uh thing with us as people just in general is having healthy boundaries. And so my definition of boundaries, when I talk about boundaries to people, I say, well, boundary serves uh, three, uh, three main purposes. And it's to protect you from others, to protect others from you, and to protect you from you. Because sometimes we have to protect ourselves from ourselves because of, of our mindsets. And so when you're talking about boundaries and even, you know, in these, uh, in these, marriages that's getting to this point what are some of the things that you you know confer to your clients about yeah we have to set these these boundaries that both of you have to agree to and both of you have to uphold you know so what does that kind of look like yeah and so just for the audience i when people come to me i'm only working with one side mm -hmm. there and i do couples coaching but that's not what we're talking about tonight so right, in terms right. of the divorce coaching and so you know an interesting thing is the most fundamental boundary and you said it it's boundaries with yourself and i think that people don't realize this so often and especially i wasn't raised in a household where there were boundaries and so what did I know? It's like if you're not raised in a household where there's music, you can't pick up an instrument and just play it. Well, mm -hmm. maybe a few people can. But right. so so if you don't know boundaries and so one of the things that you'll notice, I notice this all the time is people will say, you made me feel. I'm not that powerful. Right. You're going to feel something. So I could say the exact same thing to two people. Let's say I kind of got really upset and I, uh, my voice got loud and I was angry and I was complaining about something. A person who comes from some kind of abuse or dysfunction might be really rattled and scared by that. A person who comes from a really healthy household will be like, wow, Karen, you seem like you're really upset. You know, maybe you could keep your voice down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I didn't make either of them feel anything. So we feel what we feel based on our, our life history, our family of origin. And so at a very fundamental level, if you begin to pay attention, so often people will say, you made me feel or you made me do. Well, I did it because you blank. And so a boundary is I own my feelings and I own my actions. It's very foundational. If, if you are listening and this is new to you and you take nothing other than the baby step of saying what comes out of my mouth is mine to own the behavior that I engage in is regardless of what anyone else did. One of the um, rules that I've raised my children on is never let someone else's bad behavior determine yours. Well, mm -hmm. he did blah, 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 doesn't matter. He didn't make you be bad or out of integrity. You chose to do that. And so on the foundational level, we own our own stuff. And then to your point, a boundary is like, um, you know how if you are if you live in the suburbs, you might have a piece of property with a gate. Um, it'll have a fence and then a gate that opens and closes. That gate is the boundary. A boundary is not a steel wall. A boundary is not a sword to use to hurt somebody else. It's a way of protecting your personal space. I was in an abusive, emotionally and verbally abusive relationship, and I didn't know anything about boundaries. And so I would stand, even though the door was right there and nobody had a gun to my head, I would stand there and sit there and I would be, I would allow myself, I would allow myself to be verbally and emotionally berated. And it never occurred to me that I could grab my car keys and walk out the door. Mm. Never occurred to me. And so a boundary might be, um, I'm sorry, uh, the way you're speaking to me doesn't work. Why don't we end this conversation right now and pick up, you know, when we can both speak calmly. It could be, um, you're texting me 
nonstop. I'm not going to, I'm not going to look at every text and respond to it during my workday. I'm going to put you on silent and I'll respond to you at the end of the workday because you're upset about something and sending a lot of texts. So it's always a way of creating space. It should be done respectfully. You know, if you're doing it hostily, you're again, using it as a sword, but a boundary is a beautiful way to allow for some space and safety in any relationship. Yeah, I think that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that's one of the things we have to learn, um, you know, when you were mentioning about, you know, I, what you teach your kids is that, you know, we have to learn to to act and not just react, right? Yes. And so just because someone does something, it's not wrong that you feel how you feel, but it's wrong how you react, you know, and uh, the Bible says, you know, be angry, but sin not. You know, so yep. there's no sin in being angry because that's the emotion we're going to feel. You know, like you said, we're going to feel how we feel. But how do we react to it is what exactly. makes it wrong on our part. You know, someone steps on your toe and you say, ouch, because you it hurts. OK, that's, you know, that's uh, uh, understandable. But if you punch them in the face, there's like, oh, you know, <laughs> so it's a reaction. Yeah. And I think that my term for that is and and this is a big thing that we help clients with is. When you're emotionally triggered, usually what comes out of your mouth doesn't ever cross like your frontal cortex. You're like speaking without thinking. Mm -hmm. That never goes well, or if you end up getting physical. And so when you can be responsive, and so how do you mm -hmm. go from being reactive to responsive? You create a pause. Ernest says something to me, I can feel the heat in my whole system, like that son of a gun. And then I just, in 12-step programs, they say, if you're upset, count to 10. If you're really angry, count to 100. And what that's doing is say, create a pause in the pause of 10 seconds or more that that emotional reaction can calm down. You can reconnect with your logical mind and you can think, how do I want to handle this? Do I want to handle this right now? Do I want to say something like, you know what, Ernest, let's agree to disagree. I can't talk about this right now. I'm upset. Like there's a hundred ways that you can respond to something, but if you don't give yourself the pause, and even if it's a text, how many people, you know, they get a text and before they give it a minute, they're texting back mm -hmm. and they're in this texting battle and 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 what's happening i mean the cortisol is flying you're totally in your fight flight or freeze in your amygdala nobody's using their logical brain emotional grenades are flying across mm. the room shrapnel's hitting the kids and it's a hot mess yeah yeah emotional grenades i like that i like that <laughs> but I, I i definitely understand one of the things we do uh i'm a, in construction i'm a bricklayer um but one of the things that we do for safety um when we're coming into a, a new environment you know even just where you worked yesterday and you go home and then you come back the next day we always say do the uh 10 for 10. so take 10 minutes to look around 10 feet around you and think 10 take 10 seconds to look 10 feet around you and think 10 minutes ahead, like in 10 minutes, could this be, you know, a hostile environment? Could something that's, you know, uh, something that's hanging from the ceiling or a hole that's uncovered on the floor, you know, before you even enter into this area, just take 10 seconds to look around you to say what could possibly become, you know, a safety issue. And so if we came into even took that moment, like you said, like, before I say what I'm going to say, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let me just think, 10 minutes from now, is this going to help the situation or make it worse? You know? It's brilliant. <laughs> exactly. And and it makes a huge difference. And so, um, and so the two things we've spoken about so quickly now are boundaries and, and, and providing that pause. And so if you're engaged with, um, with somebody who has a short fuse, someone who might mm -hmm. be a high conflict personality, or for whatever reason, they they have a short fuse right now. If you can be responsive, if you can remember and set boundaries, um, I mean, and, and the other thing is, 
you know, just because you're invited into a fight doesn't mean you have to accept the invitation. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to say, nope, I'm busy. I'll pass on that one, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and these are our tools. And so we have a whole tool chest that we support our clients in picking up new ways of thinking and being that, that enable them to engage in more healthy relationships. Yeah, I, I know that's one of the things that I that I do. Um, rarely, very rarely, am I ever in an argument with anybody because my personality is just like, yeah, I'm not going there. But when it gets to that point, that's one of my things. Like, you know what? I can't communicate on that level that you're at. So I'm gonna give you time to come down. You know, calm yep. down, ease out, and then I'll come back, and then we can talk because that frequency is just is going right over my head. You know, <laughs> so that's one of the things and I do. Is just like. You know, you you just reminded me of something when I was talking about high conflict personalities in the beginning. What's really interesting is you just described yourself as a person who um, lives in calm. It's like, mm -hmm. I prefer to, if I'm going to disagree with you, let's do it calmly, right? That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. High conflict personalities thrive in chaos. Mm -hmm. They thrive in conflict and chaos. And so what what many of us resist or get anxious or reactive in it, that like, that like um, blows their skirt up. That's like, that's the thing that really jazzes them and that's their comfort zone. And when you know that, like you can see how they'll just feed on mm -hmm. the fury and the excitement. Whereas the average person's like, you know what, <laughs> this, this is really too much. Let's, let's dial it down. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, and, and I think that's a, a great tool. Like I said, that's what that's what I use because I'm just like I'm mal mannered, you know, cool, easy to get along person, very yep. passive, you know. Even if you do something, one of my things, I had a guy, and I'm gonna get back on topic, but one of the, one of the guys I work with told me one day, um, I've been a bricklayer for almost 20 years now, Woo. Uh, but he, he was telling me one of the guys I work with, he was like, I've never seen you angry. You know, I've never seen you get mad. I've never seen you, you know, blow your top or whatever. And I said, well, generally, I don't let people get that, you know, push me to that level, you know. And I said, really, the only thing that actually makes me mad is when I know someone is purposely trying to make me mad. Because I'm so passive, if you do something to me, whatever, I just like, you know, it's okay. It's, it's no big deal, you know. So the only thing that really makes me angry is when you're purposely trying to get me angry. And I know it, you know, it's like, after I say, you know, there's no big deal the first couple of times and it's still going, I'm like, all right, you're doing this on purpose. You know, <laughs> so yeah. like, that's the only thing that actually makes me mad. I'm like, why, why do you want to see me angry? You know, I turn like Bruce, Bruce Banner. You won't like me when I'm angry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I rarely let people push me to that, you know, to that stage. I'm like, no, it's not, it's not worth it. Um, I would walk away before it gets, uh, to that point. Um, so, um, last thing I want to, I want to talk about, because we, we've talked about, um, the personalities and we talked about the boundaries. Um, but I, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, one of the things I heard you, you mentioned, not necessarily now, but is the, the pain of resistance and the power of acceptance. Right. And mm -hmm. so when you're talking about that, because I, I know what it, what's in my mind, what comes up, right? And just thinking about the pain of resistance uh, to me would be someone that is so hurt because of things that uh, has transpired or maybe in the past or whatever, that even when presented with a better option, it's like they can't let go of the hurt. So it's like, nope, I don't even want to look at it or think that it might be something better because I'm so hurt that, you know, I'm pretty much just shut down. You know, uh, so that's what I think of when I think of it. Um, so when you're when you're talking to someone, you know, and even with your with your programs uh, about, you know, just to, just acceptance and, and all of that. What are some of the things that you kind of help them understand or help them to see? Yeah, I, this we all resist so much. Um, this is so many things. Ugh. I don't know what happened. I'm off track. I'm behind the eight ball. It wasn't supposed to be this way. What happened? Uh, this it, it's, it wasn't supposed to unfold this way. This is all resistance. And mm -hmm. since none of us 
sit on on the throne since none of us are the creator um mm -hmm. our plan is fairly irrelevant and and yet you think about it right it's like i just two weeks ago my podcast, the whole back end of my podcast blew up. I got so upset. This isn't what I'm supposed to be working on. I'm supposed to be working on this other project. No, no. The podcast was going to blow up. I didn't know it, but it was. And so the only place for me to be was there. And so what we resist persists. So when we're in resistance, we can't be thinking about choices and solutions because we're so stuck on this shouldn't be it's almost like we're looking at the closed door we're not turning around to see the other window or door that's opened up for us and so acceptance and i'll give you one more example of resistance so let's say you and i were married for 10 years Ernest, and and you're a guy who um uh has challenges staying on time. So you show up late. When we dated, you show up, showed up late. You mm -hmm. came to the wedding on time. But in general, <laughs> you show up late. Yeah. And here I am 10 years in going, I can't believe Ernest showed up late for dinner. I can't believe Ernest showed up. Why can't I believe it? Now, now, is it a behavior you could work on? Certainly. But if my experience of 10 years being married to you is that this is this is an area that you could use some work on, but you are consistently not on time. Mm -hmm. Why can't I believe it? Why am I getting so angry? Why am I getting so triggered? That's resistance. Acceptance is, wow, I'm married to this guy. He's really a rock star in so many ways. But when it comes to his time management, well, you know, he's not great. I know that when he says he'll be home for dinner at seven, I really shouldn't even put the meal on on the stove until 7 30 we'll be eating at eight o'clock i'm cool i'm good i've got a plan b and i'm in full acceptance and in fact when we get invitations for parties you know what i'm going to do i'm going to ask my friends to put an hour earlier on the invitation just so that we can go and enjoy ourselves and i don't have to worry about it acceptance yeah. is accepting the way something is and coming up with a way of navigating it that doesn't require ongoing fighting and berating and doesn't require you, the individual who's stepping into acceptance. You don't have to be frustrated, disappointed, angry, and in resistance. You can be expecting and accepting and go with your plan B and everything's fine. And I think we could all find many, many ways uh, where we resist. And if you think about it, how often do you think the words... I can't believe he or she did X. And how many times have they done that? That is a perfect example of resistance. And so acceptance allows us to, and acceptance is really hard. You know, acceptance is not an easy thing, but it's like, if it is, if whatever is, is, by resisting it, it doesn't change. It still is. So Ernest still shows up late, no matter how much I'm going to resist it. What happens when I step into acceptance? My experience changes. The situation doesn't change, but my experience of it changes. When you're going through divorce, and especially a high conflict divorce, and you can make those kinds of shifts, it's a world of difference because you can then go through your divorce with that calm, clear confidence that I was talking about, instead of being a reactive hot mess, which is how people usually are when they first come to us. Yeah. <laughs> I know one of, one of my things that I've learned. So again, I, I'd say earlier, you know, going through my divorces and coming out and really looking at myself, uh, one of the things I was told and uh, one of the things um, that I had to come to grips with is sometimes I reflect my ex expectations on onto others, you know? And so one of the things that I, I don't curse, right? Like I said, I'm a mal-mannered mal person. I never curse, you know? And so I don't like to be cursed at or not necessarily cursed at because that would mean generally do uh, maybe a hostile conversation, but just be using cursing in conversation with me, right? However, you know, whoever I may be entertaining at, at the time may curse and from Us. now and now and then, right? You know, and so me having to get to that point, like, okay, 
you know, allow them again, that acceptance, allow them to be who they are, allow them to express themselves how they express themselves. Now, of course, you know, don't curse at me and call me out my name or anything like that. But again, I don't even have those type of conversations anyway. So I don't have to worry about being cursed at, but I can accept that, you know, every now and then they may let an F-bomb fly, you know, but it's okay. I can just accept that and keep going. So (laughs) yeah, I can definitely uh, (laughs) relate to that acceptance part of it. Um, So I want to, I want to talk about uh, two things uh, before we get out of here. I definitely want to talk about your podcast. And then I want to talk about uh, your program that, that you have. Um, So I know you, you mentioned about the pro, uh, the podcast. Tell us a little bit more about it. No, thank you so much. So Journey Beyond Divorce is the name of the podcast. I am um, I did my first interview in 2012 and by 2016 I launched my own podcast because it just struck me how amazing it is that like you and I can sit here and have a conversation that benefits and supports people. Mm-hmm. So we started in 2016 Unlike a lot of podcasts, mine are all in series, like almost like seasons. And so I have a Mm -hmm. high conflict divorce series. I have a high net worth series. I have a life after divorce. I have a healthy relationship series. And we're actually about to kick off um, a parenting post-divorce series. And so um, what I do is I interview a lot of experts. So there's so much information to be gained directly out of the mouth of the experts without going and paying for a bunch of consults. Mm -hmm. So we try to really provide as much information as possible. And then we have these other series. I have a Voices of Celebration where clients who've worked with us and who were so afraid that life as they knew it were coming to an end and then grew and then we're excited about the next chapter of their life. So we have a series that's just filled with hope and encouragement for people. Um, so that's that's Journey Beyond Divorce. There's a lot of different tools and stories and information in there just to support anyone going through divorce. Okay, okay. So tell us a little bit about uh, your program because I know we we mentioned we talked a little bit about it uh, beforehand, but I definitely Excellent. wanted to you know have my listeners know what you're up to also. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, we we tend to specialize in high conflict divorce, and you know if you're listening and you've you've been sitting on the fence, I sat on the fence for a couple of years. It's such an enormous decision to make to end a marriage when you stood mm-hmm. before an altar and said, until death do I part. And so when you're in a high conflict marriage, there's not just all the normal worries and concerns. There's just such a a brokenness, such a broken self-esteem, so much self-doubt. You've probably been berated and belittled and, and criticized for so long. And so it's almost impossible to get off the fence. The name of my program is Get Off the Fence and Leave Your Toxic Marriage. And what we do is in a six-week program, we go through an emotional reconditioning to help the help individuals root back into who they are and the value that they have and to begin to imagine a future self that's just so much more pleasing and healthy and valuable. And then we educate them on what they need to know about the law. We help them figure out what they want to say and what they don't want to say when they say that they're leaving and, and prepare them to get off the fence and be two feet in the process. We then have other programs that can take them to the next level. But that first one is incredibly difficult. And so I believe we're the only ones out there who have this really robust program to help you get from married, unhappy, sitting on the fence. A lot of people are like, I don't know if I should stay or go. They do know they're scared to death, Mm -hmm. but they know. And we want to help them make that move if it's the right move. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that sounds like an amazing program. Um, Unfortunately, like I said, I I have been divorced twice and had to get to the point where I had to make, you know, that same decision. Um, And yeah, it it can be a a hard decision to make. So I'm glad that you you guys are out there to help other people kind of to get to that point and make that decision. 
So, uh, Karen, I, yeah, and if it, uh, can I just can I the one thing I didn't say is it's right on the home page of our website. So, journeybeyonddivorce.com is the website. So, if anyone's interested and you go to the front page, the home page, it'll talk about the Get Off the Fence program right there. Great, great, awesome, awesome. So, uh, Karen, I really uh enjoyed having you on, have you as a guest, and 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 definitely getting to, to pick your brain <laughs> definitely has been an entertaining conversation. Um, I want you to have the last word. I want you to leave us with a word of advice or, you know, inspiration, have you uh, feel free to, to speak um, and definitely give us your uh, social media handles and things of that nature where, where we can find you. Um, so I'll give you a, a quick uh, second to think about that. Um, to my listeners, I told you guys that I would tell you, how you can win $100 from the podcast, and you can win $100 from the podcast by entering our $100 super subscriber contest. And what that means is you must subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our podcast on Spotify. And after you've done those three things, text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866-326-0730. To qualify to win a hundred dollars, and that's all you need to do. The congress, the contest is ongoing and it's random. So once you're in, you can always win. You ain't got to worry about it. Um, but again, in order to win a hundred dollars from the podcast, enter our super subscriber contest by subscribing to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our uh, podcast on Spotify. And then text the word "win" W I N to the number eight six six three two six. 0730 in order to do that. Um, also, guys, I want you guys to make sure that you check out our websites. Uh, dealhealfulfilled.org is our official website. Um, there you can find out more information about the events that we have. Um, also, my personal things as far as being a speaker, uh, coming out to speak, hire me to speak, or come out to do workshops with you guys. And there's also information about uh, the podcast and links to the deal to heal teas and also ebooks by e james which is where we have our ebooks there are three ebooks that are available right now uh males to men which is a male mentoring ebook uh the four core which is the four core values that every daughter should receive from her father that is available and forgiving me which is the four steps to self-forgiveness um that's all uh, three of those are available. And speaking of forgiveness, so we are involved also with the forgiveness mission. And the forgiveness mission is a organization that I am a part of that we do free virtual workshops on forgiveness every quarter of the year. Uh, you can go to Eventbrite to register and find us there, but definitely go to forgivenessmission.com where we talk about forgiveness, what it is, what is not, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others, and uh, forgiveness of the real. Um, and we do those every quarter, um, and it's free. All you got to do is go to Eventbrite, like I said, or go to forgivenessmission.com. Go to forgivenessmission.com to get more information on that um, and see what we're up to. So we definitely would like you guys to join us there. Uh, again, Miss Karen, we definitely appreciate you being here uh, once again to, uh, to learn from you and to definitely ask questions and get some very, very great answers. Thank you for being here once again and taking out time for me and my listeners. Uh, I'd like for you to have the last word, so the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So in terms of how your listeners can find us, uh, Journey Beyond Divorce, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Apple podcast and our website. So it's all the same name. And I think the parting statement that I would like to leave is uh, life is difficult and we're forever facing challenges, right? That's the one thing that's guaranteed is we're going to face challenges. And when you take the opportunity to slow it down and understand what's upsetting you, what you're reacting to, what triggers you, and you take your energy and your time and you focus on that versus anything external to you, you're, you're, you actually get the treasure in the trial. And when you look at the other person or the situation, you miss it. And so it's not easy work, but it's so powerful and it has such a huge impact. And so my, my, 
my wish for your listeners is that they would they would always use the upset as a setup to do their personal work. All right, all right. We can't end it no better than that. To my listeners, again, thank you guys for joining us. This is Ernest James, and this is the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. And our mission is to help people to deal, to heal, and to fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. So until next time, we'll see you guys next week. Be blessed. Hey, guys, I know you're enjoying the podcast. However, don't forget to join our text line at 866-326-0730. That's 866-326-0730 in order to receive text messages with new events and things that is going on and new episodes as they release. All right. See you in a minute. Thanks for listening to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. Remember to listen, like, subscribe, and share. This episode has been brought to you by Deal to Heal Teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to Deal to Heal Teas.myshopify.com. Remember, our mission is to help you to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem. Heal from the pain and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for listening.